Hey there, Honey Bunnies. Welcome to episode 66 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. And for this episode, let's talk about boundaries. <clears throat> I do um, a lot of work with um, animal allies, support animals um, from Team Invisible, like there's the support dogs that are on airplanes, um, most of which are just little dogs being called support dogs. <laughs> but whatever, hey, if you can get away with it, whatever. Um, uh, I don't care if a dog's on a plane. But uh, I'm talking about um, what we used to call animal totems or power animals, things like that. Animals that come to us and sort of lend us their characteristics. So sometimes if you just in your meditation ask if, uh, if there's an animal that's got something for you that could walk with you on your journey for a while, you can uh, get an image of something. And then as you explore that animal, uh, <clears throat> you'll, and their characteristics and their habitat and all those sorts of things, you can draw some parallels and get some support that way. Well, a couple of weeks ago, well, actually on December 17th, I looked it up in my journal. I had a intense dream and in the, it was one of those waking dreams. And I was aware that an animal was staring at me like forehead to forehead staring at me. And, and I couldn't figure it out. In the dream, I was like, I can't, I don't know what this, what is this? I don't, I can't see, you know, something's forehead to forehead with you. It's hard to see what, what it is. <clears throat> and eventually I, it backed up and it was an armadillo and I like armadillos. I grew up in Texas and, you know, it's kind of a thing. And we've had armadillos on the property and they are pests because they dig holes <laughs> <laughs> but they're cute and they play and they run around and I don't know, they're adorable, but they, yeah, I mean, they really are destructive as hell. But my first Oracle deck way back a million years ago, when I was, I think not maybe 20 when I bought my first deck, probably my mom bought it for me, but it was Jamie Sam's deck, um, animal medicine. And there's an armadillo in there and it talks about boundaries. And <clears throat> so when I had that dream, I was like, is that still, you know, does that still ring true? Is the armadillo about boundaries? And it is um, for me. I really encourage you when you see an animal not to immediately go to an Oracle deck or the internet, but to sit with it and ask what the message is for you. <clears throat> if you go straight to the internet or to a book, then it, you know, it can block you from, first of all, exercising and developing your own intuitive abilities. <clears throat> and then, you know, biasing, biasing, sing. <laughs> let's say, sorry that my voice is still messed up. Um, let's say skews your perception and it doesn't leave a lot of room for the animal to communicate directly with you about what it means for you. So all that to say, boundaries is the word or the concept that I picked to work with for 2020. Instead of picking a word, I picked an animal and all the words that come with that animal. So of course, that has me thinking about boundaries. And I'm in a course that has talked some about boundaries. And that's always been a thing, you know, working as an a mental health therapist and an addictions specialist and even a social worker. And, um, you know, even in my very first career of being an emergency medical technician, there's boundaries are everything like they permeate our life. And in human design, my part of my life path is very much about boundaries or my incarnation cross. Um, so in the gate 19, it can le lend toward codependency and definitely that the rescuer 
archetype is something that I've really wrestled with my entire life and a lot more so even lately. So I, um, got divorced this year. It was final at the end of August and that rescuer piece is still present in that, even though we are divorced, there's still a lot of pulling from the other to <clears throat> get back, you know, get back together or whatever. And I had hoped that, you know, we could maintain a, a friendship and that that doesn't seem to be possible. And I bring that up because <clears throat> if you struggle with boundaries, it permeates your whole life. So it's your relationships with people. It's your relationships with pets. A lot of people who have that rescuing tendency end up with an enormous amount of pets <laughs> or kids. <laughs> and definitely it's encouraged in, you know, culturally it's encouraged for women to do the rescuing and the saving of the small things, animals and children and men who act like children. <clears throat> not letting kids grow up when they should, not giving them enough responsibility, this misguided guilt and thinking that whatever we're rescuing actually can't handle their own problem, <laughs> you know, that they need us to step in. Because often when we're, when we've got squishy boundaries, we don't stop and ask if it's appropriate. We feel the urge to step in and so we do. So I have a course starting on, it says healthy weight. It's kind of hard to find words to describe courses. It really is an enormous challenge because it is about your weight and it's also not at all about your weight. And it's not about going on a diet. We're, we're not even going to talk about food. We're going to be talking about how you set boundaries because in thinking of all this, seeing all the external places where my boundaries are still squishy because, you know, cats keep showing up and dogs show up and I have to go through the agony of, <clears throat> and it, it's an agony internally still to make decisions and to do what's best for me rather than just, you know, rescuing all the animals. But so looking at it externally, you can see, you know, okay, well, I'm still letting, you know, Mary Sue violate my boundaries by doing this and this and this. And I'm still letting my partner cross my boundaries because you give yourself all the examples and I'm still, you know, <clears throat> you know, letting my kids be too dependent. And, you know, you can look outside and if you're thinking about boundaries, you can start to see externally, because that's where we start, right? It's hard to see internal stuff for yourself. People may have told you, you've got shit boundaries or, <laughs> you know, you need to lay down the law with that kid or relationship or whatever, you know, people love to give you unsolicited advice. So externally is one thing. And I've been looking at that for a while. <clears throat> especially as I was making the decision to go move, uh, go ahead and move toward, you know, divorcing. So the last 24 hours or so when thinking about this weight course is it's a lot, uh, or what we're going to be doing with it. We're using human design and forest Reiki. So we're using human design to look at the parts of your chart that may be influencing your eating patterns because there are gates in the chart that come with some issues and sensitivities around food. And if there's issues and sensitivities around food, there's generally an M or what I'm finding to be true is there's a, that empath set up with a lot of open centers in the chart. So your body's eating and, you know, doing what it does, but you know, to compensate for the open space and us not really knowing how to deal with that. And then doing a forest Reiki treatment on yourself. So you're getting, <clears throat> just do a mini commercial. You're getting the level one forest Reiki, which is $300. And you can, if you want to go through the 
details you can get certified. Um, and then you're getting an eight week course and all of that for three ninety seven. So when, <clears throat> when I teach a course, I have a loose outline, but I have to really explore and wait for the information to come through about the details. So, and the theme, like the big theme. So it, it's about eating and your relationship with food, but it's not a diet because we don't do diets because they're horrible and cruel and they don't work. We, I think we all know that if you struggle with your weight at all. And it's not even about weight because you could be struggling with sugar addiction. Like you can be unhealthy and very thin. And the unhealthiness comes if you aren't in, if you can't put the sugar down. You know, if someone says, well, you've got to quit eating sugar because you're pre-diabetic or whatever, and you go into <laughs> like a panic attack because <laughs> you have to give up sugar. It's the same, right? It's just about your relationship to food. So this morning I woke up way too early and um, was thinking about how those external need, the external need for boundaries is present and we can see it. But where's the best starting place? Is it best to start setting boundaries with your cousin, Mary Sue, who's driving you crazy with her constant whatever? Or is it better to set boundaries in yourself to not engage with the cousin who's driving you crazy? And it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. What's more efficient? <clears throat> Is it more efficient to set limits around food and say, I'm not going to eat sugar? Or is it better to set a limit internally and say, I'm not going to let myself get to such a state of misery and energetic overload that sugar is the, the fastest escape route? Because often sugar is a way to manage energy. Um, your aura, your chakra centers, your the energetic systems of your body. And how much we pick up from other people and not having good daily practices to discharge that and, you know, all the things. So we're often saying we start when people start setting boundaries, it's often about what they're willing to tolerate or what they've been tolerating and what they're no longer willing to tolerate. And then the difficulty in practicing how to say no, no to requests that drain you, um, no to people speaking to you in certain tones of voice or using certain words that you've been putting up with. But I just wonder if that process would be easier if we started it with ourselves if we said to ourselves, I'm not going to let you, the internal critic, speak to me like that. It's not allowed anymore. It's not happening. I'm not putting up with it. Would that then be a way to approach the learning the skill of setting boundaries? Would it be easier if we started it internally? Or I wonder, is it easier to start it externally? Like, is, is it easier to see? Well, we know it's easier to see outside of us. But I just wonder if there would be so much outside of us, if we were able to set boundaries inside of us. I hope this is making sense. Sometimes the stuff that comes through at four in the morning... <laughs> Oh, only makes sense to me. And then I put it out there and it's, it doesn't go anywhere. And it's like, Oh, I guess that message was just for me. But what I'm talking about is um, what By Byron Katie talks about ending the internal war with yourself before spending all your energy protesting wars in the world. And we can do both, right? We can protest war outside of us while we protest or uh, decide, make the decision and commit to ending the internal war that often shows up around food. I'm not going to eat the sugar. 
oh, but it's been such a hard day. And oh, I deserve it. And everyone else can eat sugar and it can be fine. So I'm just going to eat the sugar and yeah, but it's going to give you heartburn and you're going to feel bad and you're going to hate yourself in the morning. And (laughs) you know, that back and forth garbage that's so exhausting when it would be a whole lot easier to say, for right now, I'm going to take a break from sugar and not make such a big deal out of it. And when the internal war starts saying, no, you have to say no a thousand times when you're dealing with addictive behavior, especially, but saying, no, I, I care about you. I care about you body. I care about this physical vehicle and this physical vehicle right at the moment doesn't tolerate sugar very well. So we're not going to eat it for now. Like you really trigger rebellion in yourself. If you say, I'm never eating sugar again. We've all done that, right? I'm never eating cheese again ever. And then of course you immediately set up a war within yourself. But, and then another component of that is before you can set good boundaries, you have to understand that you're worth it. And that if you don't save the planet, other people will. And letting go of the, you know, fairly arrogant idea that you're the only one that knows how to do it or that no one else can do it as good as you can. Therefore, you must sacrifice and martyr yourself till you don't have any energy left. You know, I know people, I've actually had a client who I firmly believe developed cancer because she was continually drained by everyone around her. And for whatever reason, maybe it was her destiny or whatever, That's a, you know, a windy road to speculate about, but I feel like cancer for her wasn't a way out. She couldn't set the boundaries, couldn't, wouldn't, whatever. She couldn't stop all the places where her energy was being drained on a daily basis. She just couldn't do it. Couldn't, wouldn't, who knows. But you know what I mean? Like, I guess what I'm encouraging us to do is to not focus so much on the other, on the people who are out there crossing our boundaries, people, animals. There's an endless stream of cats and dogs in when you live in rural environments. People dump them. If you live anywhere near a farm, people, I don't know why people think it's a good idea to dump animals off in fields near farms as if farms have, you know, unlimited capacity to take abandoned animals. But, you know, there's an endless stream. And I have trouble saying no to that. So, of course, I you know, attracted and against my better judgment, kept a a little Siamese temple guardian who chases off the other cats for me (laughs) to his own detriment sometimes. There's one stubborn stray he hasn't been able to chase off, but it's like looking at him, it's like I wonder if he would have an easier time if I would just make the decision that the there is no room at the inn rather than trying to find a way to cram in one more abandoned animal. There's an endless stream of struggling people. There's an endless stream of people who need help. And if we don't set limits on that, we end up compensating with food. A lot of helpers are overweight. A lot of people who are always doing research for other people without being asked, um, jumping in and suggesting plans and strategies, you know, without being asked, spending a lot of time looking up things for other people rather than taking that 
you know, human design path of waiting, thinking about what you want to offer in the world and waiting for things to respond to rather than looking for things to respond to and initiating actions and spending a lot of energy, right? Spending energy on solving problems that aren't yours to solve, that you haven't been asked to solve. At some point we have to say no. And that's not easy when you want to save the whole you know, all the animals or all the people. There was actually a study done on social workers and the percentage of social workers that struggle with their weight. I don't remember what the exact number was, but it wasn't surprising to any of us social workers who were struggling with our weight. <laughs> and not all do, but again, you can struggle with food and not be overweight. If you're compulsively eating or eating foods that you know don't make you feel at your best, it's disordered eating, whether you're overweight or not. So when we start practicing boundary setting, if we started it with ourselves, then dealing with other people a lot of times <clears throat> will resolve itself and you don't have to even do anything. Have you ever had a situation with a person that finally is getting to that peak where you uh, internally put your foot down and you're, you know, you're prepared to really set them straight and give them a piece of your mind and you really mean it this time and then they change or they go away? And then you're like, damn it, I had my speech already. <laughs> I was prepared to stand my ground, damn it. And, and the situation just evaporates. That happens because it's you, you internally resolved it. So it didn't need to be acted out or played out in the physical environment anymore because you took care of it. And in a way, I sometimes feel ripped off by that. <laughs> Like I really wanted to go deliver my Oscar winning, you know, scene in my life movie. <laughs> so if you're struggling with people taking advantage of you, if you're struggling with eating food, whether it's a weight issue or not, are you struggling with drinking too much? Are you struggling with smoking too much? Where do you need to set boundaries internally? Where do you need to say to yourself, I will not tolerate you speaking to me in that tone of voice. I am not willing to hear you talk to me like I'm a piece of shit. That internal voice. Don Miguel Ruiz calls it the parasite in the Toltec system. I'm going to assume that most of you have read that book, The Four Agreements. If you haven't, you probably should. It's a good book. He, uh, I don't, you know, I'm not 100% a fan of it because I, it, I do think it can sometimes trigger that war within. Because if we think of that internal critic as something we have to fight against, then sometimes we are stepping into, again, to that internal war zone. So I'm not a huge, I'm not a hundred percent on, on board, but there's really good information in there that you can take and explore for yourself. But he has another book called, um, oh gosh, the voice of knowledge or something like that, where he talks about that voice, the internal critic, the, the, the voice in you that really just beats you up. If you're still allowing that to happen. That one that tells you it's never going to work for you and, or, you know, your life is crap and it's always going to be crap. You know, you're never going to win. You should do this. You should do that. So what would happen if you took the next 30 days and treated that internal voice the same as you would treat an external person? 
Like a lot of people would never in a million years let an external person talk to them the way they talk to themselves. Like if someone came up to you and started like verbally berating you because your house is cluttered or you didn't do something you said you were going to do and like was really turning the shame screws on you. There's a lot of us that would be like, who do you think you are? <laughs> like You can't come in here and talk to me like that. But we'll talk to ourselves that way. And even worse, we'll say thanks to ourselves. We would never and ever say to another living creature. And we wouldn't let anybody, you know, wouldn't let anybody outside of us talk to like, talk to us like that. So <clears throat> what if we did that? What if we tried that? What if we viewed ourselves? So I, I got sidetracked, but you know, you have to feel a, enough that you matter enough to start saying no to yourself, that you have a right to say no and set limits with yourself that you have a right to feel good, that you have a right to have a body that, you know, doesn't hurt all the time because you're eating grains and your body's sensitive to grains right now. Or you're eating sugar and you're feeling tired and bitchy and weepy. But sugar does a number on emotions. I can tell you that. My family's taken enough breaks from sugar that we really notice how bitchy we get when we eat it. <laughs> bitchy and weepy and anxious and obsessive. So it's not to demonize sugar, but setting boundaries. So less attention on... Uh, worrying about setting boundaries with your cousin and unless you know obviously if it's some immediate thing that you need to put your foot down about that's different but finding that non-negotiable voice for yourself that advocates for you that says no you're not going to stay up till two in the morning and then get up at five and try to go to work you're going to Put your leave your cell phone outside of your bedroom because you know you can't be trusted. <laughs> <clears throat> or you're not going to eat past eight o'clock at night or whatever it is. Mostly, I think it's good to start practicing boundaries about how you talk to yourself. I stuck a note on my mirror several months ago, I want to say probably in October. And it, and it just says on the note, I don't actually think I took it down now, but it said, I refuse to say mean things to you because I was saying such mean things to myself and it certainly wasn't helpful. And so I had to draw that boundary, which, you know, actually looking back on it, I did start setting some pretty firm boundaries in myself, which would make sense that now I'm looking at it outside and now applying it to an area where I need further boundaries and that's around food. Um, so anyway, so every time I went to look in the mirror, I would see that sign, you know, I'm not, I refuse to say mean things to you. And I don't look in, in the mirror and criticize myself. I haven't done that in, God, forever there's just no point in it I don't know when I quit doing it but there's just no point in it like there's no point in agonizing over wrinkles or the way your face looks it's your fucking face and you're stuck with it <laughs> and you can do stuff to it but it's still your gonna be your face like you can change how your skin looks and you can do a, a little tweaking here and there or you can have full-blown surgery but it's still your face so there's just no point in in bitching at yourself about your your face <laughs> so I don't do that but you know when I go to the mirror I would catch myself saying a lot of mean things about other areas 
or arguing in my head or just more less me sometimes mean things but uh, lots of shaming things like oh I can't believe you didn't do this again and oh my god there's not enough money coming in and blah 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 that kind of stuff I wonder how we would all feel at the end of January This is what, December 28th? I think it's December 28th. At the end of January, if we took a month off from bitching at ourselves. And if we created, you might have to sit down and create, like, where do I even need internal boundaries? That's another thing that had me thinking. It's like, except for a few people, I'm pretty firm in my boundaries. Pretty clear I don't socialize really. I have, you know, pretty strong limits. I don't talk on the phone. I don't really communicate with any one person on a daily basis ever. Even my closest family, I don't talk to every day. So I have pretty strong boundaries about that. But then I was sitting down making a list of, okay, where do I need internal boundaries? Okay, I need boundaries around my internet time. I need boundaries around um, playing on my phone at night. Oh, man, that one's still a struggle. I've gotten a couple of good books. And so now I'm making myself put the phone down and read and I'm making myself stick with the book long enough that it finally catches my attention. And I don't have to leave the phone outside the bedroom anymore, but for a while I had to, cause I couldn't be trusted with it. <clears throat> I would wake up and, you know, hop on Twitter, which is insanity. I need to put um, different boundaries around not what I eat or or when, but the volume, that's still an issue. I do intermittent fasting, um, so that's been helpful, but the, the volume is still an issue. So I need boundaries around that. I need boundaries around these animals and boundaries around this person who is having trouble letting go. So where do you, and boundaries about what I say to myself. So where do you need that too? Do you need boundaries about your money, about what you say to yourself about your money? Or how you interact with your money? Are you shaming yourself about your debt? Dude, we're always going to have debt on something. If you're living, you're going to have some kind of debt. This is a subject for another podcast, but there is a thing that I've seen happen repeatedly with myself and others that when we rush to pay off debt because we feel bad about it, it just comes right back within a few months or a year. You're, you pay that credit card off and you're like, ah, finally, I don't have to feel anxious about the credit card. And then before you know it, that balance is right back up again because you didn't address the core of why it was up to begin with and what was really going on. And you paid it off out of fear and anxiety. So of course it just comes right back, but we won't get into that. So where in your life, so make a list if you want. Sorry for sniffing in your ear. Someday I will be over this cold, this never ending story of a cold. And I won't have to sniff in your ear. I apologize. Um, so it, you can make a list of the domains of your life. So relationships, health, career, or job, uh, food, pets, you know, the areas of your life, household stuff. And ask yourself, where am I not setting good boundaries internally? in these areas and it might look like discipline but you have to set a boundary to have discipline you or and you have to make a commitment that you're going to have this boundary that you value yourself so much that you're not going to let 
the bills stack up and make you feel freaked out every time you walk past your desk. And, or you're not going to let the dishes pile up or you're not going to go to bed with your cell phone. So you could look at the areas, make that list, look at where you're struggling and then just ask yourself, if I had a boundary around this, if I set a limit and committed to myself and stuck to it with some discipline for 30 days, just for 30 days. And if 30 days is like, oh my God, I couldn't possibly give up sugar for 30 days. Start with three days. How about three days? Could you go to bed without your cell phone for three days? And what would it feel like to love yourself so much that you wouldn't allow yourself to engage in self-talk or behavior that causes you pain. Not about should, like you shouldn't do this, but you know from your own life that whatever behavior X causes you pain and discomfort or shame, something negative, what would happen if you set a boundary and said no more? No more. I love myself so much. I will not say mean things to myself. I will not allow overeating because overeating causes pain. And I love myself so much that I'm not going to stuff my stomach and spend three hours in pain or nausea. Or I love myself so much that I will move my body however I can for the day because I know I feel better after. So hopefully this makes sense and it's useful to you. If you want to know about the healthy weight program, and if you have a suggestion for a better name, (laughs) because I don't want people to come in thinking it's a diet as it's not. We're we're anti-diet around here. Um, anyway, it's on the website. It it starts January 4th. So I kind of jumped into that and may not have left people enough time. But anyway, it starts January 4th. It comes with Forest Reiki level one. It comes with eight weeks, seven phone calls. There'll be a week off for integration. It comes with community support. And I'm going to give you actual scripts to say to yourself when you're about to dive headfirst into the Oreo package. (laughs) Or if you have eaten enough and you are wanting to eat more, I'm going to give you actual scripts, words that you can say to yourself. Here's what you say to yourself when you are heading back for seconds and you're already full. Or here's what you say to yourself when you've decided not to eat sugar for the day, but there's candy in the break room. Here's what you say. I'm going to give you the words to say till you can come up with your own. All right. So the website is thatmichellewolf.com. Two L's in my name and two F's. I am not Michelle Wolf, the comedian who's always getting in trouble. <laughs> I frequently get like mean twi- mean tweets from people who think that I'm Michelle Wolf, the comedian, even though we look nothing alike and I don't know. It's weird. Okay, I'm going to stop babbling. Think less, feel more. Talk to you next time.